So, so far, we have just been looking for the future value. And in our simple interest equation, the future value is the subject of the formula. So when you go through everything, you're automatically just going to sub in the present value, the interest, and the duration. And you solve for the future value. But what if we don't want to solve for the future value? So say, for example, we know what we want to get out of an investment. Say we want to get 20,000 Rand out and we have 10,000 Rand to put in and we know the banks have stated simple interest rates. Then at that moment in time, we would want to know how long would we have to put our money into the bank to get it up to 20,000. That means that our N needs to be the subject of the formula. So what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to make N the subject of the formula. So we can solve for N. So how do we go about doing that? So we start off with our original equation. Technically, it is right there, but let's just rewrite it. The aim I don't understand is to get n by itself. So to get n by itself, we need to get rid of everything else. So you'll notice that n is in brackets here. So what we can do is we can take everything over here and move it across. And we move it across by dividing through by it. So we're going to have future value divided by present value is equal to 1 plus i times by n. Now, again, the aim is to get this n by itself. So what we can do, there's an addition sitting over here. So we can take everything on this side of the addition and move it across. And we can do that by subtracting both sides by 1. So now we have future value divided by present value minus 1 is equal to i times by n. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to, again, the aim is to have n by itself. And n is multiplied by i, so we can divide through by i on both sides. So we're going to have future value over present value minus 1 divided by i is equal to n. So now we have the formula where n is the subject of the formula. Let's just make it super clear. We have n is equal to future value divided by present value minus 1, all divided by i. So when we were looking for n, we will use the formula in this manner. Okay, what about the formula where we have the interest is equal to PV times I times N? So again, we just make N the subject of the formula. So we want the N to be the subject of the formula. And that means we're going to divide through by the PV times the I. So if we do that, we're just going to have N is equal to I divided by PV times I. So that one was a quick and easy one. And for this one, you only need the total interest, the present value, and the interest rate. So let's go ahead and do some examples. Okay, so we have an example where it says, how long should you invest 22,500 Rand at a simple interest rate of 2% per month for it to reach 30,000? So the first thing we should notice is that it talks about the simple interest rate. If it talks about the simple interest rate, we know the formula for simple interest is FB is equal to PV 1 plus I times N. The next thing we note is that it says how long should you invest it. So we're actually looking for N. So we need to make N the subject of the formula. So we've already done the working out for that just earlier in this video. So we're just going to write it down. FV divided by PV minus 1 divided by I. So that is the formula we're going to be utilizing. 
And now we're going to just read the information to see if we can fill everything up without requiring any additional information or any secondary formulas and so on. So the first thing that we look at is how long should you invest 22,500? So the 22,500, that is our present value. So 22,500, we're gonna put it over there. So now we have the present value at a simple interest rate of 2% per month. So we have I is equal to 2% per month. And remember, we like to put the subscript as what it is actually representing. So we have I12 over there, and then we can just take that away. Next up, it says for it to reach 30,000. So we did the 2%, now we have the 30,000. So we have the future value is equal to 30,000. So we have the future value there and we have the I. So we have everything we need for the formula. So we can just go ahead and plug it in. So if we go ahead and plug it in, we are going to have N is equal to 30,000 divided by 22,500 minus one divided by, and this is 0 0.02. So what did I forget in the discussion here? It was just converting this 2% by I12 to the decimal fraction notation. So 2% is two divided by 100. And then we just put it into our calculator, making sure that the order and the bottom mass situation for it is coming up correct on our calculator. And we get 16.6 .6 months or 16 and two upon three months. It's six reoccurring kind of a situation. So we would have to invest for 17 months in total to get to that 30,000 because you don't take the money out halfway through the month, you'll take it out at the end. Just a note on the plugging it into your calculator. If you get concerned about it, you know, making sure that it is going in the correct order, you can make sure that you use your brackets for it. So brackets are your friends, you would be able to place a bracket around this whole piece here and a bracket around here kind of a thing to go ahead and put in your calculator. Another thing is you don't have to use the fraction in your calculator, you can use the divide by button. So just, just a short little note on that in regards to your calculator. So next up, we have an example which says we have a loan of 12,000 Rand at a simple interest rate of 13% per annum. If the total interest at the end of the loan period is 650 Rand, how long was the loan? So again, we're just going to start off with, well, we know it's simple interest. So we have the future values equal to the present value. One plus I N. And that was written really badly. So let's just fix that up. There we go. And then we have the case of we asking for how long is the loan. So it would be if we just followed it straight like this and didn't think about anything. Future value, over present value minus one divided by I. And again, I'm going to pretend I didn't see the total interest part so that I can reach the point where I'm like, oh, clearly the formula that I'm going to use doesn't make sense and then branch out from there. So if we go ahead and look at all the information that we're given, we're given a loan of 12,000. So the present value is 12,000 at a simple interest rate of 13% per annum. So we have I, one is equal to 13%, which is equal to 0 0.13. And again, that one stands for the per annum. Then we have the total interest at the end of the loan period is 650 Rand. So we have big I is equal to R650. Now, the moment we saw that the, 
we have a big I, it means that the formula that we're using is not necessarily the correct formula for our requirements. So what other formulas do we know with a big I, the total interest? Well, we know that I is equal to PV times I times N. We're like, oh, this is actually a lot easier for us because if we go ahead and look, what do we have? We have PV, we have I, we have big I, and then we just have that N. So we actually didn't need any of these overall. So we could have seen this straight away. We could have read it and mean like, oh, there's the total interest and go from there. But once again, I'm going to do it the long way around. So when you reach a certain point, you go, what do I need to do? You have that process in your head. So we only needed I is equal to PV times I times N. And then we make N the subject of the formula, which means we're going to divide through by PV times I. So we have I times PV. Sorry, I made a big mistake there. I just said we're going to divide through by PV times I. And then what do I go and do? I times it by PV. So I divided by PV times I is equal to N. And I'm talking about I and I. Please note, I'm talking about the big I and the small I. So the formula, just in case you're not comfortable with it looking that, in that direction, is that. So let's go ahead and put in all the values. So N is equal to, it's 650 divided by 12,000 times 0 0.13. And that's going to give us 0 0.416 kind of a situation. And what units is it in? Remember, it corresponds to the interest units. So this is years. So we can times that by 365 to get it to be 152.08 days kind of a situation. But 0 0.416 years is correct. We can do it times by 12 to get the number of months and so on. I, the total interest.